everyone, this is Pig for Life, and today's P4 review will be taking a look at the newest figure from Fans Toys. This is their FT24 Rouge, their version of a Masterpiece RC. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started with packaging review, as always. Uh, it's a nice small box, pretty typical as far as uh, Fans Toys go. You get the nice images on the front and the sides of Rouge, which is... Oddly enough, stands for red in in French, and I guess kind of makeup blush kind of thing in um, in English, I suppose. On the back, you do get a lot of the uh, promo images. You can see a little bio on the top left here. I won't read that for you, but you do see all the accessories she comes with. So, in addition to the face, she actually comes with four additional faces: uh, an alternate chest piece, which is a little bit more squared off. Uh, then the rounded additional piece uh, that comes installed. She gets a handgun and she gets two pieces that make her rifle. All right, uh, you do get to see her alt mode and uh, <laughs> some clamor shots as well for her. But uh, that's really it for the exterior packaging. Bringing in her internal packaging as well as extra accessories. Uh, you can see that she has an instruction booklet, which is kind of tiny to get into the box, and the images are really small. Honestly, these instructions are pretty terrible, given how complex and frustrating this instruction is. And, and it goes to the back and says, okay, and as if um, that was all easy. But we're going to go ahead and skip that. You do have her stack card, as you can see here. Kind of an odd color. On the back, you get some more of the images than basically what we got on the back of the packaging. So we'll just ignore that. Once you open up the styrofoam, you get a little protective plastic film to protect the paint. You get Rouge herself. Uh, we'll see if we can stand her up. That is one of the downsides of this this figure. It's very hard to stand up. And then all the extra, uh, extra accessories that I was talking about before. So let's see. Can we get her to stand decently? All right, <laughs> she looks awkward, but just bear with me for one minute. So here are the, all the accessories here. Again, the handgun, the rifle, these additional faces, and she's a little bit more wobbly here because um, my display stand uh, is, or at least the base is uh, a little bit foam based. And she also has two additional hands, so I didn't mention this before. So the difference between these hands and the ones she comes stocked with are that her palms, or I guess her fingers, don't have this tab that uh, associates with her her weapons. So you can see a slot in here and a slot in the handle of this gun. So if you don't want those or you want to pose her without um, these weapons, you can just go ahead and pop this off. You just come to the bottom here and just kind of twist it off and you can see that pops off. But we'll keep these in. I just want to show those off very quickly. And then we can get rid of them. Let's see, let's try to get her to stand not so awkwardly. Uh, but yeah, this is one of the major complaints that a lot of people have had with the figure. I don't think it's that bad, but it's also not that great given she's rocking high heels. The rifle, which I had to go look up and see when she used this, but she does actually use this. Uh, you, it does come in two pieces, you just push it in like so, and then you get the rifle. Again, a little bit of paint detail and mold the detail. You have this weird section here, which I never really understood. Um, it looks fine, nothing too exciting, and I don't really associate this rifle with her, but it is based on the cartoon. Looking at this gun, this is one that we, I guess, understood a little bit more, and we see a little bit more uh, in the show or the um, the movie. And it has smaller details, but nice painted yellow pieces. And again, both of these work in the same way. It's kind of hard to get in her hand, just because her hand is kind of small, but just go ahead and open the fingers. Just try to get in that slot here. And then you can close up the palm or, or the fingers. And that's how it all works. It works pretty well. So let's get rid of that. Uh, let's see the alternate chest. So this is the one that's a little bit more, I guess, screen accurate or toy accurate. It's just uh, kind of more of at an angle. This is rounded to be more, I guess, <laughs> organic. Uh, I don't really prefer this one, but it's pretty easy to to um, change this out. You basically 
pull up on this, and then you have two sets of screws here, which I guess I can show you guys very quickly. Might as well do that first. You just go ahead and loosen these two screws at the top. Yeah, so I guess you have to unmount this as well. All right, so then you get this piece and you're gonna replace it here. Actually, you can probably just get away with just unscrewing one now that I think about it, cause, because it's a rounded piece like that. Yeah, you should just be able to get it in like this. So ignore what I did before. You can just remove one piece. Get this back in and then we'll be all set. Now again, replacing it here. There we go. Then we can fit this back in, like so. Tab it back in. And there we have RC with her less voluptuous um, <laughs> chest place, plate. And I prefer this one. Continuing on with the review. Um, Let's do a quick 360. Maybe we should have done that before. Uh, one of the biggest problems I have with this figure is just how kind of gappy it is. Like this looks kind of terrible and you actually see through the entirety of her, her chest. Um, same a little bit back here with the backpack doesn't bother me as much. Uh, this does, uh, but there are some ways around that. The backpack is not too terrible. You do get a lot of this windshield piece and the steering wheel. I can forgive that. That's not, not that big of a deal. Uh, I do think the backpack looks a little messy internally, but again, not a huge deal. Uh, I do get bothered by this gap here. So as far as aesthetics, I think it looks pretty good overall, but there are a lot of small things that bother the heck out of me. Again, the gaps here, the gap here especially bothers me. Um, and then the other thing is, these gaps here for the mushroom pegs, um, it honestly reminds me of a, a Hasbro figure. Um, just to give you an idea, this is Al C, the uh, upscaled version from Wei Zhang of the deluxe figure, and it has the kind of the same thing, right? I know it's for engineering purposes, but I've never, as far as I can tell, I don't remember having a masterpiece scaled figure that had these kinds of gaps as blatant as this one. Like there's one here, here, here. I mean, it's a thin piece, so it's probably hard to engineer otherwise, but that stood out to me personally as making it look kind of cheap for a masterpiece, especially a fan's toys figure. Uh, but otherwise it looks really good. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about quote unquote um, fixes. Uh, I want to talk about the backpack because there are a couple of quote unquote fixes. One that I actually really like was one that, uh, I forget what YouTuber or, or, or um, reviewer or, or fan did it, but you basically use this backpack piece and flip it up and you kind of angle it through this, this little slot area. And it kind of clips on. It does actually a really good job. It makes the backpack in here, at least her back, look more natural and compact as, as opposed to having this weird kind of flat piece just sitting on the back, which looks kind of weird, right? Like this, when you're out, out of the way, that looks like a normal back, pretty much. Um, but doing it this way is, is a simple solution that isn't all, all that obtrusive, and it's pretty stable, unlike her chest and the tapping mechanism for her abdomen, which we'll get into later. But this actually looks pretty good. It's pretty solid. Uh, it doesn't look, uh, you can barely see it from the front, and from the side, it doesn't look that bad. The back, it doesn't bother me all that much. Uh, the other alternative is to actually bring out some of these internal pieces, and I'll show it off a little bit later, um, how they work, but it's basically the rear part of the car on these white struts that come out and backpack, uh, tab together to form a backpack. Oh God, this, this figure is annoying as hell. So one of these lower, these this chest tabs in here, and it doesn't do a very good job. Neither of the pieces that I have do a, a tremendous job. And this piece here just kind of 
sits down like that, it doesn't clip in really. So that's super annoying. But anyway, those are my um, annoyances. I think the stock face is okay. It's not the greatest. But luckily, um, I actually like the other faces. So let's look at the alternate faces. So this is the face I like the most. I think it's the most, I guess, innocent. <laughs> I'm not sure. This one again has the smaller eyes. Uh, I actually I actually don't even know what the real difference is between these two, except maybe a slight smile on this one. She has her, um, I guess, goggles or something like that that come down that she uses every once in a while. And then she has this, I don't know, crying face or yelling face, I, whatever it is. This one is probably like my least favorite. I just don't understand it at all. Um, but yeah, so if you want your your RC to yell, you can use this one. They all have me metallic eyes, which which are great. I prefer that. And really quickly to install these, you just go ahead and flip open the top of the head. And then you just pull forward. It's on just a basic tab and slot piece. You just shove that in. And for me, that works a little bit better. Uh, it may not for you. I guess it depends on how aggressive you want your RC to look. So yeah, let's get into articulation really quickly since we're already talking about robot mode. Uh, she has a ball jointed head, you can see up here, but her neck is also articulated on this pin joint. So she gets a good, good amount of, of range on her head. Can look all the way around. Uh, she does have this piece, but it's not really supposed to be articulated. And again, I wish it tabbed in in place somehow, somewhere. Uh, her backpack pylons are on the swivel as well as these double hinges. Actually, there's a bunch of hinges in here, but you don't really get that much meaningful use out of them in this mode. They're really for transformation. Her arms are on a ball joint. Again, for a masterpiece figure of this size, it's kind of weird to have just a ball joint, but okay. She has a mushroom peg for a shoulder. Mine, I think it was this arm or one of the arms when I rotate them, um, they, it tends to pop off. Oh, I guess it's working now, so that's good. Double joint to elbows. She has this kind of weird high forearm swivel, not even a wrist swivel. She has a pin joint at the wrist and then um, her fingers are all one molded piece. No thumb articulation. Down to her waist, she has no waist articulation, like nothing. She has no ab crunch really. She has no waist swivel at all because of the way this transformation works. Um, and I think that's kind of unacceptable for a masterpiece figure. Um, I'm very disappointed about that. You can stretch out her waist like this and get a little bit of tilting, but again, this is for transformation and then you have this weird joint stuff going on. And I hate this chest, son of a gun. I, I really hate this figure overall. Um, there are some good qualities about it for sure, but there are more frustrating qualities, especially transformation once we get into it. Her hips are kind of interesting. So you can have them collapse inwards and then you get very limited articulation, but you can pull them outwards. Kind of like, I think like some figure arts figures are like this too. Um, you pull them outwards and you can see a little bit of the hips there and you can get a lot more range, like 90 degrees forward, pretty good back. Uh, you get a thigh swivel. Uh, you can go outwards almost 90 degrees, although when I pull this one out, usually it messes up on the, uh, oh, the hips, they're not splitting apart. They usually split apart. So it's, it's uh, pretty good. This upper like buttocks piece, like high thigh, is also on a separate separate swivel if so if you want to maneuver that separately you can not sure why you would want to she has uh, a very neat deep knee bend which is nice it does expose some of the wheel but i actually kind of like the look of that and then the ankle she has an ankle rocker forward and back this thing can also separately articulate and then she has a toe swivel or toe joint i suppose is there anything I missed? I did I did talk about the thigh swivel, right? Yeah. So, so that's really it for articulation. Overall, I think it's okay as far as articulation goes, but it's not really, like, it's some of the choices are kind of odd. So again, no, the fact that that has no kind of real waist articulation is a bummer. Um, 
And then the weird wrist, which is higher, which is okay, I suppose. And the ankle and the foot is actually pretty good. Oh, I'm sorry, and she also has a rotating ankle joint here, which is actually kind of a nice addition. Before we go ahead and get into any kind of transformation, which I'm not looking forward to, uh, let's go ahead and try to keep her standing while I bring in some comparisons. So first one, standard with all MPs is MP10. Come on, stand up. I think it's a pretty good scale. Uh, we had LC out earlier. So a little bit taller than that. I'll get her out of the way. And the only two other are two, uh, comparisons I'll do are with the official MP Hot Rod. I think that looks really good. Um, and then, well, good as in they're at least the same height, pretty much. Uh, and then with, with the Unique Toys run, Running Man, I forget what the other name for him it was. Their Blur, which I think he looks spot on for the... Their blur. Still my favorite blur. So I think it works pretty well. I think it will scale much better with the Hoodlum, Fans Toys Hoodlum, which will eventually come out um, sometime down uh, down the line, which I think everybody's kind of excited for because a lot of people weren't very happy, myself included, with um, the scale of MP Hot Rod. So let's get into transformation. Um... The first thing we'll do is kind of deal with the chest and the head. So let's go ahead and untab this portion and lift up on the neck. You're going to, want to pull out on this series of hinges here and go in and pull that piece out that we had before. Come on now. There we go. And as you can see, that kind of makes up the nose cone or the tip of the, the nose cone. Uh, from here, we'll also untab the back, like that. See these two tabs were in th these two sections here. Lift this up. We'll separate these two, um, these two sections. So there are two halves. This section kind of reminds me of MP Starscream how the, the chest piece kind of works. It's on the double hinge and you have to kind of swing inward and then outward. So let's see if I can do this right. Am I missing some? Oh, sorry, I forgot you have to untab the shoulders here first. That's why they weren't moving. Come on, there we go. So untab this. So you're gonna wanna go, I kind of push one to one side like this and then pull down. Come on. There we go. And then on the other side, you want to angle it down into the other side like this. And then you get this entire floppy miss, which is a pain to deal with. Um, the, the reason we need to do that is because you need to clear this chest section here. So what you need to do is kind of push through. And this entire section is also on a, um, a small sliding joint. You can see these round sections here. You can see it's kind of slide up and down. So you're going to need to work with that. You're going to want to slide this through. And you're going to want this hood piece to slide through as well. So just kind of do a combination of swiveling, shifting down right now on that sliding joint. And that will help you clear it. All right. And then you'll know you did it right because... You're coming up and extending this up here. And you can see the, the front hood of the car, or kind of that section, has been completed. All right. Uh, let's see. Next, we'll deal with the head. Uh, this section has to fold backwards on this first joint like this. And then you'll come in here and you'll see these two small tabs. They'll need to fit into these small slots here. So it's kind of it's kind of weird. You're gonna to want to come full underneath and then push it into the slots and then tab 
this section in. All right, and again, making sure that it's angled like this. Uh, eventually you'll want to push the neck forward and then split the head like this, uh, but let's deal with that a little bit later. All right, the next thing we'll deal with, uh, let's go ahead and deal with the arms. Bring the arms around. You want to have the ball joint facing in. You want to have the elbows double jointed and bent like that. And I think that's correct. Oh no, sorry. You have to rotate the hands at the wrist 180 degrees and they're going to go like this. So same thing on this side. Get this cleared around. And remember, making sure that both elbow joints are utilized. So this is not right. There we go. Like so. And it's going to kind of sit like this. Uh, while we're here, let's go ahead and clear the uh, steering wheel. So you want to, I don't know if mine's mismanufactured or what, but this center black console is not actually centered with this white piece that it's connected to. I have no idea if that's correct or not. Um, the only way that I can really get this steering wheel forward is to kind of angle it like this. So the blue part is kind of angled towards the passenger side. And I could just kind of, honestly, I just kind of had to force it forward. Um, I guess you could probably find other angles that make it work like that. But for me, because I think it might be misassembled or slightly off center, uh, that's the best way I could figure out doing it. All right. So next we'll start dealing with the shoulder things. You'll see this is kind of tabbed in here. It's a very loose tab. Uh, you want to pull that out. Uh, you're going to want to pull this piece down like this. And you're going to clear it like so. And you'll see this kind of a U-shaped piece here. You want to kind of get that here so that this gray piece slides around it. Like so. Flip out this piece. You're going to flip out the antenna rear wingy thing and fold this in. Okay, and this is the piece I was talking about before um, on this double hinge. You can kind of extend this out and combine it with the other half on this side to make a solid backpack or uh, to make a solid backpack like this in the center. Uh, maybe we'll show it later, but that's the, essentially what you need to do. Anyway, so getting back to the transformation, go ahead and fold this on the set of hinges and you'll see these small peg holes and and pegs. Let's go ahead and peg that in. Again, flipping that in. Make sure this is out. From here, we're going to want to pull out on this double hinge. And once you do, you can also fold out on this section outwards. So it was like this, fold it out like that. And you can see how it's all kind of coming into shape. This is the rear of the car. This piece will now come in and tuck in. It should, through friction, friction uh, stay in place. Get this around, and you're gonna have like this, these uh, pieces in kind of a U shape. If you're looking at it like this, from here, you're gonna want to get this little piece underneath here, and then there's a little peg underneath this section that will go in here. I know this is taking, this is a little complicated. It's just a really complicated transformation. All right, from here, you can go ahead and tab this in and tab in the front section if you want. Uh, you may want to do that later, but let's just go ahead and, and take care of that now. All right, let's do the same on the other side. Oh, and from here, you can actually, once that's done, you can kind of push back on this to hide it a little bit more. You'll still have this little pin piece hanging out, but it's not as obtrusive. So same thing on the other side, we're gonna try to do this a little bit quicker. Uh, again, I find it easier to just kind of pull down on this while you rotate this out and then have that gray piece slot in here. It's definitely a little bit of a clearance nightmare, but um, especially with pieces so thin and honestly kind of soft in, in terms of plastic, 
um, but that's the safest way that I found. Pull this piece out, pull this piece out. This will end up being the seats. And then uh, once you pull this out on the double hinge and roll this around like so, you can tuck this back in. And again, you're gonna wanna swing this around and create a U-like shape. Get this slid in. Get this invisible peg pegged in there. Tab this underneath first and then tab up, up the front section here. So that's the front end of the car. Um, kind of messy, honestly. It looks kind of goofy, and especially with these pieces, but it's, it's not terrible. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and tab in both of these sections in the back as well. All right, next up, we're gonna extend that waist joint that we saw before. We're gonna need to do that. Um, I believe we have to collapse the thighs in, or the hips in, rotate the thighs 180 degrees. As we do that, go ahead and flip out these sections here on the front of the thighs. All right, extend at the knee and at the shin. This is where it's just kind of a very odd transformation. All right, from here, uh, what you're eventually gonna do is these pieces open up slots for these two pieces there. So these are gonna tab in there. But before we do that, ugh, this piece is, it's just all a floppy mess. You're gonna to want to fold around on this newly released or revealed double hinge. Fold this in like so. And then you're gonna point the toes down like that and they're gonna kind of go in this groove. Uh, this heel screw piece is gonna allow this piece to kind of sit in there. It doesn't really tab, but that's at least what they're saying the idea is to, to do that. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but we'll just, we'll just pretend it was. So first thing I like to do is go ahead and slot these two thighs and you can do it by feel. Then you just kind of push these in. You can angle the ankles a bit to get this kind of slotted in. Again, not really, but let's just pretend. Same thing on the other side. And you can see the two halves of the um, legs kind of form a piece here. And this is what I was talking about before. They said you split the head open like this, and this piece is kind of supposed to fit into this gap. I, I don't think it works as well as they intended to, but it kind of sits like that. And you want to have this hinge piece flat. And if you got all that right, <laughs> it should not all pop out. But I think, honestly, I think something's wrong with this internal piece. I think that maybe this middle piece is flipped around the wrong way because there's not really much clearance for the head to fit in here the way that they say that it should in order to sit properly. Oh, and of course I forgot the, the wheels here, but we can still take care of that. Just pull down on the front wheels at any time during the transformation really, and they kind of tab into place. Friction into place, whatever you want to call it. There we go. And that's it. Uh, oh, lastly, sorry, 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 sorry. The hip, back of the hips, the unfold here and that's what locks in this piece you can kind of angle the steering wheel but then that's it you know that's essentially what you're supposed to be um the wheels are rubber uh, there is die cast and i should have talked about that in maybe robot mode but there is die cast throughout some parts of the legs um i forget exactly which piece but there are there's some die cast there i think the toe tips might be die cast but this transformation, as you can tell, is really kind of complicated um, in the same way that I thought Coot was overly engineered as well. I think it does do a pretty good job of having a final result. Um, again, this part looks kind of goofy and the interior looks really kind of bad. But the rest of it, 
actually looks okay. There's nothing too terrible going on. Oh, gosh, but everything everything just doesn't work as well as it as you would expect it to. Um, it does roll and it does barely have clearance just like Hot Rod. It has just enough clearance. He do, you can see her face on the underside, which I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, but I guess you're never going to get that low to see it. But it's almost like it, you know it's there. It's like staring at you. Anyway, so we, here we have her in um, her alt mode, which again, overall looks okay. You can get kind of like Spike, kind of get him seated in here if you want. It actually sits really nicely. Uh, he's a little too tall, but in terms of like sitting in, uh, his butt kind of frictions in fairly well. Okay. Uh, no storage for any of the weapons that I can tell. Some people are saying you can kind of like stick the gun in here, but obviously that's stupid. I don't know why you would do that. That's just like making up shit. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't be cursing. Um... Yeah, that's, that's really it. It's kind of a mess underneath. But again, who really cares? Uh, comparisons. <laughs> you, can, you can tell I'm kind of like frustrated just because I... As frustrating as that transformation was, you've got to understand I've practiced that probably like a dozen times both ways to try to get it right and as smooth as possible. It does scale well with, with um, Streak, which I think is really nice. The windshield is nice blue color. Um, yeah, there's really nothing much to say about this alt mode. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get back in, into uh, robot mode because uh, I know people are going to want the transformation backwards, which I think is probably more frustrating. And then we'll finish off the review. So uh, let's scooch this back up. First thing I'd like to do is kind of deal with uh, the wheels. Just go ahead and push them in. Let's go ahead and flip the head and close that up. Uh, let's go ahead and unpeg these because I always forget about them later. So let's just go ahead and unpeg these for now. And then pull out the legs here and here. And that separates the entire lower body. Straighten out the legs. Close the thighs. Rotate them around 180 degrees. Collapse the legs, and there are some uh, tabs in here. Collapse the shins. This feels like soft rubber or something like that, or soft plastic in here. Um, you can see it flexing a lot more, so it doesn't feel like it's going to break, which is good. Close that up. Get the toes kind of pointing the right way, and then let's collapse the waist since we're here. So the lower body's already done. That's the easy part. The upper body is going to be where it gets kind of complicated. Let's untab this. There we go. It's an over and under, so you kind of want to push like this when you pull it out. Untab the front sections here. Oh, just a couple things. I've been, I don't know if this was a paint chip from the annoying transformations, but um, I've been seeing a lot of paint issues with my figure. And it could be from transformation. Just letting you know, because it is such a frustrating transformation. Just be careful so that you don't damage your figure or any of the paint. Uh, these sections were already in here, but they fell, up, fell out through friction. Let's just deal with them later. All right, let's keep going. Uh, let's go ahead and get this steering wheel through. So again, the way it works for mine at least is uh, kind of angling it like so. Oh, wait, was it this way? This way. Angling it like so. And just pushing through. There we go. And then we can deal with the front. Untab this. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and transform the upper body and deal with the shoulder pieces last. Um, I find that the easiest because they're just the ones that get super annoying and out of the way. Uh, and in the way. So let's go ahead and do that first. All right, so from here, if you recall, uh, yeah, let's try to get these arms at least down out of the way. All right, 
So we're gonna have to deal with that uh, sliding mechanism like last time. So what we're gonna wanna do is fold in the, the front piece and have the sliding joint slid all the way forward to give you the clearance to push that through, push that in, and then you can't keep pushing through without sliding up on uh, sliding back this way on that joint. There we go, and you'll get that cleared. I think maybe this little paint chip is from just clearance issues there. And from there, uh, we're good. We're, we're good with the um, that portion. All right. And you can see this kind of all comes back. Oh, sorry. Comes all back like this. All right, so let's go ahead and deal with the rest of uh, the backpack for now. Oh, well, actually, no. The first thing we're going to do is deal with this section here. So as we did before, we're going to want to get uh, the middle section, the internal section, back in place. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is unpeg this and separate this piece. Because this is the piece we really want to deal with, the front portion. And again, what you want to do is kind of get it in and then out this way. So you want to angle this across to get it up and out like that. Same thing on this side. Pull out that peg on the front, releasing this section and extending these triple section joints. All right, so from here, Again, pushing across to the center, Acro across the center and angling it. Oh, God, this toy is so freaking annoying. Because you have to make sure that this piece here, this white piece in the center back is uh, as flat as possible. See how it's like kind of angled right now? You don't want that because otherwise it screws everything up. So there we go. So get this up, angled out, and then that way you can clear when you push in like so. And now you can tab both, both sections in like that. From here, rotating down on these multiple sections, you can now tab this section into the back or I guess the core, the back will tab into the core. And since we're here, let's go ahead and just finish off with the main body. These sections will collapse up like this. This will collapse down. And if you can manage it, try to get a secure tab on both sides here. It may or may not work for you and then fold the head up. The arms can now tab into the side, like so. Those actually tab in pretty well. And aside from having these arm pieces floating around, you're pre pretty much done with transformation. Uh, it's just ha It just so happens that this is the most annoying part of the transformation. So let's see if I can remember how to do this. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is um, fold this around like so and then this double hinge here is going to collapse in like that so you kind of do that simultaneously so it goes in like that oh, oh. let's make sure that this didn't slide back in because it's such a loose joint and you want to make sure it's on the outside all right from here as I mentioned before, uh, this gray piece kind of has to go through here. So let's un untab this section here, unpeg it. I'm gonna bring this down, fold this in, fold the antenna in. You wanna keep this kind of out. So what you wanna do here is get this gray piece aligned with this gap, having this kind of at a right angle. So when you fold this over, that seat section goes in and then you fold it up around this section like so. 
And then once you get that cleared, this is where it gets kind of annoying. Um, I found that what you need to do is once you get that cleared, you kind of have to pull on this arm section to get it through like this. So now you can see that U shaped section is there. <laughs> so complicated. You want to be able to pull that up past this little ridge joint. And that's when you have it, the clearance to get it around like this. <laughs> I know that was super complicated and believe me, that was the easiest way I could figure out how to do it or, or ex and explain it. Maybe some other reviewers have done a better job. I haven't watched any other reviews um, for this. So maybe somebody else has done a better job, but that's the best way I've found. So again, on this side, let's do the same thing. You're going to want to fold this down like that. Oh, let's get this rotated like that. Making sure this is out. Flip on this double hinge to get it to sit in like so. Get this piece at a right angle with this U gap piece here. Now we can come back, untap, unpeg this, fold this in, keeping this out and folding the seat so that it fits in here and it closes around once you push it in. Again, I don't know if that makes sense to any of you guys, but that's again, the way that I've found that it works best. Um, clearly it's not working for me now. Oh, there we go. And then once it's like this, pull this up. See again, the U piece is kind of riding that rail, but you want it to go as far up as possible. The challenge is just getting it around this little bump here. There we go. Once that's all the way up, you bring it down have this into place and flip the arm forearm around and you have RC back in her robot mode. And again, I, I like this section, the, the picking it this way the best. I should have shown the alternate transformation, but to be honest, this video is already getting super long and I, I'm frustrated with this figure enough as it is. Let's go ahead and extend the hips out a little bit so she doesn't look super awkward. But yeah, that's, uh, that's it for the transformation. Hopefully this has helped some people out. Um, final thoughts. Uh, I don't really like this figure. I don't think it's anywhere close to the type of quality and level of esteem that many people hold fans toys to. Uh, this and Coot have incredibly frustrating transformations. Um, I don't have Apache, so I can't tell you how that is, but I've heard the same for that. So I don't know what's going on, if they have a new engineering team or what, or new designer, uh, but these latest figures have not been very fun. Uh, they may look the part to some degree. Again, I've had, I have issues with Coot. Uh, I actually don't own a Coot right now, and I had to give that sample back to Toy Dojo, but um, I think they have gone kind of off the deep end with transformation. I don't think this needed to be this complicated. And some of the choices they made, I thought were very, very poor. Um, I think the fact that a lot of people share that kind of sentiment with this transformation uh, speaks for itself. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to dwell on it anymore. Um, you're going to either like this figure or you're not. Uh, I think a lot more people are probably going to lean towards Let's not even bother transforming this figure because the alt mode is not that great anyway. And I think most people will say, hey, she looks good as uh, an RC in robot mode, or at least good enough, better than alternatives, which I do agree. I think she looks better than Toy Worlds. She looks better than uh, Alci as a whole, for sure. But I mean, that kind of makes sense. This is a deluxe figure that's oversized. Um, but as far as like a home run, this is far from it. Uh, if you guys are going to want an RC for your collection and are never going to plan on transforming it, this might be for you. Um, 
But if you ever enjoy transforming figures, this is probably close to some of the worst figures that you can get in recent memory, for sure. And probably one of the worst from fans' toys. I think you can get by with it, though. Um, I think the most frustrating stuff is just kind of the, the transformation and the weird choice with the backpack. Like, if you didn't use this, like, this, I don't find this acceptable at all. Like, this is just a floppy mess. I find this section, these gaps here, all that adds up to a really disappointing figure for me. So, if you're a Fans Toys fan, um, you know, you're probably going to say I'm, I'm being too harsh on it. Um, but otherwise, that's just kind of my honest opinion. Uh, I wouldn't recommend pick, picking up this person, this <laughs> this figure, unless uh, you're just planning on keeping a robot mode for the rest of its um, life. Alright, if you do want one, go ahead and click on the Toy Dojo link in the description below, and you can get that from Toy Dojo, my sponsor. If you have any questions, comments, or if you think I did a terrible job transforming this, which I might might have, and if there's a better transformation video out there somewhere, point me to that direction, because uh, I would love to see that. Alright, that's all for today everyone. Hope you have a good one.